On today's video, we're going to talk about how to cast a spinning reel. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors and like I said earlier, today's video is going to be about how to cast a spinning reel. Now if you've never casted a spinning reel, you're in the right place because we're going to start at the beginning. And if you do have a little bit of experience with spinning reels, you're still in the right place because later on in the video we're going to go over some stuff like casting distance, casting accuracy, and maybe some ways to avoid line problems. So for you beginners, this is a spinning reel, okay? It's got the crank that you turn for retrieving lures and baits in. It's got this open spool in the front where the line goes, and there's also this bale, and that bale spins around the spool as you're turning the crank, and that's what gathers the line in and wraps it up around the spool. The bale essentially has two positions. This is the closed position, and that's for reeling baits or lures in. And there's also the open position. When you take it and open it like that, and now the line is able to come off the spool freely, and that's what will be happening during the cast. Another thing about a spinning reel is this is the correct position. This is the correct way the spinning reel sits. It's actually underneath the fishing pole itself, okay? Not like this. This is incorrect. This is actually upside down. Okay? So the correct way for a spinning reel to sit as you're casting or retrieving is like this. Now it's pretty important to make sure that your spinning reel is attached to a spinning rod. Okay? And the easiest way to tell if you have a spinning rod is to look at these line guides that are nearest the fishing reel itself. They'll be substantially bigger than the ones further down the pole. Okay? as opposed to a bait caster like this one okay the line guides on this are all pretty close to the same size and that's because with a bait caster the line is only really coming off the reel on the cast in one certain small area so it's okay for these line guides to be kind of small initially as opposed to the spinning reel where it's got this spool out front and the line comes off all around this spool so it comes off from a bigger area and needs to be necked down gently on the cast to get better performance out of the cast. Now a while back I did a video on spinning reel basics and I covered the difference between spinning reels and other reels, spinning rods and other rods. I got into setting the drag, I got into what the anti-reverse is, and I did get into casting them a little bit but it's more an overall picture about spinning reels okay and if you're at all interested in that video I'll leave a link in the description of this video below okay so you can just click on that and you can check out that video if you want but this video is just gonna focus on casting a spinning reel okay so how do we hold the spinning reel and spinning rod alright I like to hold it with two fingers in front of this stem and two fingers behind this stem just like that okay the thumb on top and that's how I reel stuff in with it and that's how I hold it when I cast it alright now you can go with one finger in front of that stem you can go with no fingers you can go with your whole hand in front of the stem it kinda comes down you know to what you feel comfortable with what works for you okay so let's get into the basics of casting it what you want to do prior to casting it is you want to reel your lure or bait up to within 6 to 12 inches of the tip of the pole okay and then you also want to get the top of this bale right there's a bale roller and that's where the line sits as you're retrieving it okay you want to get the, that bale and the bale roller so it's as close as it can get to the pole alright you know not like this not like this but like that where the line comes off that bale on the bale roller you want to get that as close as you can to the pole 
Okay, so now when you're holding it like this, it's not very hard to reach down, grab the line in one of your fingers. Some people like to use two. I like to use one. Grab the line in one of your fingers, and now you can open this bale. Okay, and now when I let go of the line, the line can free flow off the spool. Now, of course, I want to do that at a specific point in the cast, right? So now at this point, I want to bring the rod back, bring it forward pretty swiftly, and let go of the line at some point on that forward motion of the cast. And then hopefully the lure or bait will go to a desired location. Again, you put that bale so it's as close as it can be to the rod. Reach down with one finger, grab the line, open the bale, and then you'll bring it back, and then you'll bring it forward, and as you're bringing it forward, let go of the line, and again, the lure or bait should go out somewhere, hopefully to a desired location. Now, once you've casted out your lure or bait, you're going to want to retrieve it, at least at some point. Okay. Now remember, this bale will have to be closed in order to retrieve the lure or bait. Now, there's two ways you can do it. You can just turn the crank of your reel and the bale automatically closes. Or, we'll open it back up again here, you can just reach down and close it by hand. Okay, And I would highly recommend closing it by hand. All right, It's going to save you a lot of line issues. When you crank the crank, okay, sometimes that bale kind of snaps shut kind of quick as the bale is spinning and it has a tendency to put loops in the line and you just want to avoid that. Now, ideally, the same hand that you use to hold the spinning rod and reel when you retrieve it would be the same hand that you would want to cast with. That just makes life a lot simpler, right? There's less transition. Some people will cast with one hand, okay, and then they'll switch over, and then they'll start retrieving, holding it with the other hand. It's a little clunky. It's not as efficient. I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, so now we have a good basic overall idea of how to cast a spinning reel. Now, the more you do it, the better you're going to be at it. Okay, you're going to get more distance out of your cast, you're going to get more accuracy out of the casts the more that you do it. Okay, there's no substitution for practice. But there's a few things we can do to kind of hasten that process along. One thing you can do to add a little bit of distance to your casts, and as you can see, I've taken the end off this rod for this demonstration. But one thing you can do, all right, you're holding the setup with this hand, okay? This is the hand you're casting with. You bring it back, you bring it forward, you cast out, all right? Take that free hand and put it right on the back of the rod, right at the butt of the rod, okay? And you can really generate a lot more snap going forward, a lot more torque to get that lure out there a little bit further, okay? Um, in fact, a lot of setups will actually taper down quite a bit right here and then bulk back up. And that's to create a little bit of a handle for this offhand to really create a good snap as you're throwing that lure forward. Using that second hand during the cast will give you a lot more control. And that will also help with your accuracy. Now another thing that's going to give you a little bit more distance on your casts, okay, as the lure is in the air, point the rod right at it as it's flying through the air. Okay, If you're pointing in some other direction, say the lure is going that way, if you're pointing off in some other direction, that line's got a lot more friction to overcome, you know, making a 90 degree angle to kind of chase that lure out into the water. Okay, So you want to point the rod right at the lure as it's flying through the air, and that'll give you a little bit more distance. Now, when you're casting a spinning reel, okay, it's perfectly fine to bring it back, pause for a second, and then bring it forward for your cast, okay? And especially if you're just starting off, you know, trying to make sure you got good control over your rod, there's nothing wrong with doing that, okay? You can bring it back, kind of pause, okay? And then bring it forward. That's perfectly fine. But if you want to get a little bit more distance out of your casts, okay, it's going to be a lot better to bring that back and immediately swing it forward, okay? And I'm going to break out the ice fishing rod kind of show you what I mean. All right, again, this is an ice fishing rod. Um, this is not really meant for casting, but for showing it to you, for demonstrating, it's going to work out pretty good. Okay, so we bring the rod back to cast. All right, we got this lure on the end. Okay, we bring it back. The weight and the momentum of this lure are going to put a bend in the rod as we're swinging it backwards. Okay, it's going to load the rod up a little bit. 
And when that rod loads up, if we immediately swing forward, okay, we're going to have this bend in the rod. We're going to have this little bit of a loading up of the rod. If we swing it forward and let go at just the right time, it won't just be the momentum of my arm that is flinging that lure forward. It'll also be the momentum of this rod unloading is going to give it that little extra kick to whip it out there just a little bit further. And if you'll notice, I really don't go that far back on the back part of the cast. Just enough to load the rod up, and then you go forward with a little bit of intensity. And, you know, it takes a little bit of practice to kind of get the right feel for that, because it's going to be a little bit different for every rod. It's going to be a little bit different for every lure you use. But over time, you kind of develop a good feel for it, okay? That's a real important aspect of fly fishing is letting that rod load up on the backswing and then coming forward, okay? Well, the same goes for spinning reels, too. You don't have to use that. Like I said, it's fine to bring it back and pause and then go forward. But if you want to get that little extra whip out of it, bring it back, let that rod load up just a little bit under the weight and momentum of that lure, swing it forward, and pyang! You get that little extra kick from that rod unloading at the end. These techniques are great for casting lures. But if you're going to be fishing with live bait, you're probably going to want to tone it down just a little bit. Certain types of live bait can rip off the hook during the cast. So for a lot of live bait casting, it's going to be more of a nice soft lob cast. Now another thing to keep in mind when you're casting a spinning reel. Okay, alright. So let's pretend we're casting, right? We fling it forward. There's line coming off the spool. The lure's in the air. Alright. One thing I like to do is as that lure is going out through the air, line's coming off the spool, I like to reach around and just kind of cradle that line in this hand. And just as the lure is about to hit the water, I like to gently slow it down and kind of put the brakes to it right as the lure is hitting the water. And what that does is it stops excessive line from coming off the spool after the lure hits the water. Okay, because if you can imagine, if you cast out, and that line's just coming off the spool, and you just sit here and wait for the lure to hit the water, plunk, you're going to have a little bit of residual extra line coming off the spool. So now you've got this slack line kind of hanging down, all right? And now, even if you close the bale by hand, there's just a lot of slack line, and then you're going to start reeling. And any time you reel, when the line is slack, that's a real opportunity for loops to develop on the spool. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, we definitely want to close the bale by hand. That's going to help us out, all right? But as the lure is hitting the water, I like to just kind of gently slow it down and hit the brakes to it. Just as it's hitting the water, that keeps uh, excessive line from coming off the spool. Now I'm going to reach down, close the bale by hand, and then the other thing I like to do is after I close it by hand, give the line just a little bit of a pull, and that kind of is a, just a double check. If there just happened to be one little loop kind of sneak in there on me, I'm going to give it that little pull, and it's going to get rid of that line loop, okay? And then I can start retrieving the lure or bait, and hopefully I'm retrieving it on a nice, smooth, tight line with no loops on it. You can also use that offhand that you're using to cup the line at the end of the cast to help improve your accuracy. If a cast is going to overshoot the target area, you can gently cup that line add a little resistance and shorten the cast. But probably the best thing for improving accuracy is just practice. It really takes practice to develop that good feel for casting different lures, different distances, with different equipment. Muscle memory is a big factor in being able to cast a spinning reel accurately. And the only way to achieve that muscle memory is through practice. And for you guys that have never actually casted a spinning reel before, don't be afraid to practice in the yard a little bit, okay? Get a little experience under your belt before you actually head out onto the water. So anyways, guys, there's a few tips on how to cast a spinning reel. I hope they help you out. And also, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless. That's how you cast a spinning reel.